with a round of applause. Join me as we welcome God's choice servant, my father, Apostle Michael Orobo. There are four things every believer must begin to do in order for the life in the spirit to begin to flow. And until that life flows, you are not a champion. Until that life flows, you are not a wonder to your world. Until that life flows, you are not the answer to your generation. The first is yielding to the promptings of life. The proof that you have life is that when life comes, life begins to bring some promptings. The moment the child is born, nobody teaches the child hunger. Life itself has the capacity to educate the child that hunger is a reality. Nobody teaches the child how to look for food. Nobody teaches the child that the mouth is the gate through which food enters. The moment a child is born in the hospital, sometimes the eyes are still closed. He's looking for something to put in the mouth because life has the potential of generating promptings. That's what the Bible calls the law of the spirit of life that is in Christ Jesus. The moment you receive eternal life, the proof that you have received that life is that certain promptings will begin. If you will grow that life to a point where you become a wonder to your world, then you must nurture those promptings. For some of us, the moment we receive life, we started having hunger for worship. Hunger. You didn't know, but suddenly Christian songs began to make sense to you. The reason is because that life is demanding to be fed. It's demanding to be fed. He said, the law of the spirit of life that is in Christ Jesus have set me free from the law of sin and death. The word set free used in Romans 8 2 is the word elutero. It's a power. So there is a power that is inside life. But that power will be activated when you begin to respond to the promptings of life. There are some of you, the moment you receive eternal life, you started desiring fasting. There are some of you, the moment you receive eternal life, you started desiring to be alone with God. All your friends, suddenly, they came, they were telling you about Arsenal, Chelsea. You didn't have appetite for it anymore. You started being alone. The Saturdays that you will be in football club, arguing from morning to night, suddenly you are alone with God. Because life is putting a demand on you. There are some of you that the moment you receive life, hunger for prayer began to move you. You didn't even know how to pray, but you are looking for people who pray. And the more you pray, the more you are quickened. If you want to master eternal life and become like Christ in this world, you will follow that corridor of prompting. That's why in the school of the spirit, you don't force any course on a man. It is life that will select your course outline. Because one person will begin with worship, another person will begin with fasting, another person will begin with prayer. Because what life is trying to do is to mortify the power of the flesh. And as you begin to discover that prayer is what matters to you, what you will do is to make new friends. Your former friend was a football analyst, but now life is demanding prayer. And so you will let go of that your former friend and go and make friendship with somebody else who is a man of prayer. And as the person is praying, the prayer he's praying will be resonating with your spirit. You may not even be praying with him, but as he's praying, you are hearing him. And then you now go home, you are sleeping in your dream. You start hearing that same tongue. Kakaka, rakika, atatatoa, babara, kakatuna, alado. You wake up, it's like a dream. You now discover your lip was moving. Your lip was moving. What you will now do is to draw closer to the person. If he tells you I'm busy, you say, whatever you are doing, I want to help you. That's where mentorship comes. I know you are busy, but I just want to be around you. You know why? I depend on you to survive. There is an offspring. There is a child that has been born in my spirit. There is a life looking for expression. And if I starve that life, that life will die. This child that has been born, I don't want to leave it in the theater, in the hospital. I know a new life has been awakened in my spirit. And so even if you are busy, please don't be worried. I will be a nuisance for a period of time. But a time will come when this child will grow. I will be able to stand on my own. But for now, I need you to survive. And so if that person says, go away, you will be there. If that person says, I don't like you, you will be there. If that person sends you on errand, you will go and come back. But you are grooming something. You are grooming something and you will be praying and what you will notice is that the tongues will become stronger 
it will become stronger. When you started, you couldn't pray for long because your life was not yet strong. As you prayed with him, after a while, you discover your prayer time begins to grow. Your prayer time, it begins to grow. And then you will notice a point will come. You will wake up in the morning and you will pray in tongues. You will think it's 30 minutes when you check it's 6 hours. Because now you have moved from dead tonguing into journeying in the spirit. Because now as you are praying, you are traveling to the realm where that life came from. And a point will come, as you pray for a while, you will start praying and you will see your wall, light will start coming out. And you will ask yourself, is there another door on my wall? There are doors everywhere. It depends on the realm you are walking in. And you will pray. After a while, an angel will walk into your room and you are asking yourself, where did the angel come from? Then the Bible will come alive. For we have come to Mount Zion, the city of the living God, to an innumerable company of angels. The angels were always there, but they live in the realm of life. They were always there. That time you were in trouble, angels were there, but you had not awoken life. Now that you have found the promptings of life and you are yielding to it, suddenly angels will start passing through. Sometimes they didn't even come to you for a message. How many of you have been there? You are just praying. An angel just passed and went. He didn't talk to you. You were hoping the angel would talk to you. The angel didn't come to you. What is happening is that your realm is beginning to collide with his realm. So the angel is on his own business. You are also on your own business. But spiritual transaction is beginning to take place. Transactions, transaction. Different kinds of intersections have begun to take place. And the point will come. You will be praying and suddenly Enoch will pass. And you will ask yourself, I thought you lived many years ago. The realm where they went at times when as you are praying, suddenly your eyes begin to hurt you. Eyes begin to boil. After a while, your palm begins to boil. After a while, your feet begins to boil. And you are praying. You can't stand anymore. It looks as if you are dancing. Karakaka. What is happening is that you are entering corridors. There are some corridors that angels of fire dwell. And when you come there, you feel their intensity. Did you not read in Revelation chapter 1 verse 10? He said, I, John, I was in the isle called Patmos. Patmos is the island of death. But the guy has mastered something. He said, I was in the spirit on the Lord's day. And I heard a sound as of a trumpet. And as I turned, I saw seven golden lampstands. He moved from Patmos to Zion. Because there is something about life that he has mastered. Life is a gateway. Life is a corridor. Life is a realm. When you enter, you break in. Who told you you are weak? They lie to you. There's a life on your inside. It's deeper than theology. As you begin to generate the energy of that life, you will discover that life is a realm. You see evangelists singing. You think it's about a good voice? No. There's a realm where sound dwells. Sound. Sound. There's a room of sound in the spirit. When you enter that room, you will begin to hear those vibrations. It's what you hear, you sing. Songs are not created. Songs are given. They come from yonder. It's the realm of life. Hey,
they have reduced spiritual reality to theology. Somebody goes to Bible school and he said, I studied eternal life 101. And you did it in one week and dropped it. Who told you you have studied eternal life? Sometimes it will take five years to master that promptings. Because that prompting is taking you somewhere. It can begin as a silent voice. As you are following it, a point will come. It will take you to the room of fire. Fire will touch your tongue. When you talk, men won't hear you with their head. They will hear you with their heart. Sometimes it will take you to the room of wine. You will become drunk with the Holy Ghost. Sometimes it will take you to the room of power. And you will touch something. When you return, anything you touch is healed. Because eternal life is a word. It's not something you read through theology. They can introduce it through doctrine. But it's an organic reality. The way you access it is by the promptings of the Holy Ghost. Too many of us have aborted life. We have aborted life. We became too busy with business. And so when life was troubling us, we were not there to tend to it. You want to pray in one minute? Can somebody pray in the Holy Ghost? Yara Kapash. Ah! Ah! eternal life the first prompting that was awoken in my spirit was fasting when the life began to be energized I will wake up in the morning I want to eat food it's like a sin not because I had a fasting program it became a sin to eat food one day two days 10 days 21 days there was a point I fasted for five years it was life still driving me I didn't plan it. It was not discipline. There was something going on inside that I could not explain. And then after a while, prayer opened. Can I tell you what happened? I was in the place of prayer. One afternoon, I went to see a friend of mine. And I just laid down. And that thing began. And because I didn't want to distract people, I covered my face and I began to pray in tongues. After a while, I entered a trance. In that trance, I saw an eagle. It's bigger than this building. And as I was praying, it was like a lens. I was being zoomed into that eagle. Zoomed into that eagle. And suddenly, I found a small man hanging on the wings of the eagle. If the eagle flaps once, he moves from one state to another. If he flaps, he moves into another country. And as I was zooming in prayer, I now saw a picture. I now discovered it was my image that was hanging on the eagle. The moment the trance left me, the doors open. I've never called anybody, invite me for a meeting. As I'm talking to you now, if I want to take all my invitations, I will preach every day to the end of the year. Because it's a reality in the realm of life, but I had to journey to meet it. And when the corridor of prayer opened, it was not about the time, it was about the reality. And when I was able to embrace the reality in the realm, in the natural here, it became automatic. Nations opening everywhere. Only America, I have more than 25 invitations before the month of August. How is it possible? How did they hear about me? This has nothing to do with Facebook and YouTube. If you like, call people. Print flyers. Invite friends. It doesn't work like that. If it is not registered in the spirit and if you have not traveled there, you can't see the manifestation. When you begin to journey into life, you start downloading the realm. Because everything that your life should represent was already written. There are realities there. But you must touch it to bring it here. And the way to journey there is through promptings. Promptings. 
Some of you wake up in the morning. There's a song on your lips. You sing that song the whole day. You go to sleep. You are singing it. You are the one who thinks it's a song. It's not a song. It's a vehicle of transport. Because sound, sound is a medium of transportation in the spirit. He said, I heard a sound as of a trumpet. As I turned, he was in heaven. How many locations have you aborted? How many journeys have you failed to attend? Because you didn't yield to prompt it. When men are taught eternal life, they become sensitive to the promptings of the spirit. There are weeks when you wake up and God tells you, don't go out. They have mobilized an elder to come teach you the Bible. And as you are indoor praying, you go into a trance and the Bible begins to open. The next time you are talking, you look like an ancient. And people are asking, what did you read? It's not what you read, it's where have you been? You are not traveling. When life comes, sometimes for three months, it puts you on the corridor of fasting. Where is the energy to go visit friends? Sometimes when life comes, it puts you on the corridor of prayer for eight months. Eight months, you are alone indoors praying because you are traveling somewhere. Fasting takes you to a junction, then prayer takes over. Prayer takes you to a junction, worship takes over until you get to the destination the promptings will not cease. That's how generous are born. That's how giants are born. Giants are born because they traveled when life invited them. It sucked them into that realm. And when they came to the end of their destination, they saw him that dwells in the midst of light. it must be an economy of your spirit and you know what life does when these promptings takes you to certain destination and you start seeing things they will not leave you 
so that you now will hunger and thirst for it. And so a point will come. Like David, you are the one who will say, I am panting for something that is beyond the stars. A point comes. It becomes a burden in your spirit. You tell yourself, I'm tired of religion. I'm tired of going to church every day and coming back as a parishioner. Lord, show me your glory. Did you see how it happened to Moses? Hear this. You know, one of the irony of scripture that I have seen is that the Old Testament saints walked in New Testament realities more than we who are in the New Testament. Moses was in Egypt and there was a prompting for him to go out and see the Israelites. He left the palace where there was enjoyment and go to meet slaves. He now saw that they were being bullied and then he became a body. He now killed an Egyptian. When Pharaoh came to him, he wouldn't stop anymore. He ran and he was still seeking God because a body had come. A prompting will draw you to God. A body is you gravitating towards God because you have found something that you will not sleep with. You have become tired of the status quo. That's when life begins to grow. Many have theology in their head, but they have no reality to demonstrate because all they learned was in the Bible school. They didn't follow the organic leading of life. Some of us have short-circuited life through iniquity. Some of us have short-circuited life through busyness. And you think giving all your time to the business is what makes you a champion. You have not understood how life works. There is something you will touch in the realm of life that will put favor on your life. You will become greater than everybody in that business. Not because you are the best trader, but because there is a force that draws people to you. Lift your hands toward heaven. There are three things God mandated me to release to people everywhere I travel to. Everywhere I go to, he has given me the authority to release it because I have caught it. This is not doctrine. This is not theology. It began with doctrine, but I have experienced it. I have touched it. One day I was praying when life was teaching me prayer and I saw in a vision something was moving like a fireball and as I remained in that prayer they kept zooming the lens until I saw that what was moving was a man and when they showed me the figure of that man I discovered I was the one that was when God told me your garment in the spirit is fire it was from that encounter that when I talk the heart of men born even those who don't understand English when they hear the message they can't sleep even when I'm tired and I can't preach people go back home and the things they heard me say begin to echo in their heart while they are sleeping sometimes when they leave the meeting what they hear on the tape is many times more powerful than what I preach in the meeting and they are wondering as if when the message enters the internet it becomes stronger because I saw something and so the older the message the stronger the message is a fire it's a fire it's a fire and I caught it I caught it because when life was drawing me, those were the things I collided with in God. There are many things I have seen that I may never say till I leave this world. But there are some that he has permitted me to bring as my contribution to the body of Christ. Lift your hands toward heaven. I don't need prayer for the fire of God to hit people. It's my quota to the body of Christ. I just want you to tell the Lord now, let that fire that brings unquenchable hunger rest upon me now.
you are mighty on your throne. Lower the keyboard. Lower the keyboard. Lower the keyboard now. Just play for me faintly. There's a fire about to rest on people here now. And I want to lay hands on these ones quickly. Ushers, you will help me inside and outside. God wants to ordain new warriors. And the garment is putting on them is fire. Because this place is choked. I don't want it to be aggressive. But ushers, help me now. The first 24 people that the hand of God comes upon, bring them here. Father, by the Spirit, I release that rod of fire for the baptism of the last day martyrs, warriors and witnesses. Take that fire. This place is too choked. If it's aggressive, it will be difficult to contain. You ancient Zion's king, Kadosh, Kadosh, you are mighty on your throne. Break forth, oh spirit of the deep, cry out, Kadosh. Please be careful, these are iron chairs, I don't want people to be injured. That's why I'm not being very intense and aggressive. Be careful. There's a fire coming upon you now. I want you to go outside now. That fire is spreading. God is raising his army by the spirit. I release that flame. I release that flame. Help her. Kadosh, 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 is the Lamb of God who sits upon the throne. He alone is worthy of our praise. Kadosh, Kadosh. Kadosh, 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 Kados
the name of Jesus. Please hear me. Don't be distracted. What I'm doing, listen, I'm deliberate. If I want to stir your emotions, I know what to do. I want you to catch something that will control your life for the next six months, for the next one year, until you break into something. And I'm being careful because I don't want people to fall awkwardly and get injured. I've seen that there are iron chairs. Hmm. In the name of Jesus. If you can pray in the Holy Ghost, pray for one minute. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Please hear this. The second thing that God wants to release to people here tonight is light. Light is what delivers your inheritance to you. When you begin to journey in life, you come into light. He said the life is the light of men. And the light shines in the darkness. And the darkness comprehends it not. You can't succeed in business until you have light. You can't succeed in ministry until you have light. You can read a book. But until light comes, you will not know what to do. Ah. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus Christ. Peace be still. Peace be still. Thank you, Father. Now lift your hands toward heaven. God wants to raise transgenerational champions. But we only become to the degree that we have seen. If you can't see, you cannot bet. If you can't see, you cannot replicate. And so when God brings people into the economy of life, he sheds light in their path. There are some of you, you have struggled with darkness for a long time. Great potentials, but they never find expression. Darkness that has run through your ancestral bloodline. Darkness that has encumbered your territory. There's a light God is about to give. There's about to be a baptism of light. That we distinguish you and set you apart for your generation. Please lift your hands toward heaven. Inside and outside. Father, I call for a fresh baptism of light. Men that will become champions in their spheres of engagement. Be it ministry, be it business. Wherever you have placed them, in the name of Jesus... Take that baptism now. Usher, oh, accept them. Usher, oh, accept them. Usher, oh, accept them. Help them, ushers. Quickly, quickly, quickly. It's a moment of the spirit. Let people not fall on them.
by light rule your generation by light subdue your enemies by light take over your territories by light shine in your generation I'm sensing the spirit of intercession. There is a grace coming upon some of you now. Power on the altar is the power for intercession. You will grow. Please help mama, help mama, help mama. for intercession on the altar man with the kneel of the camel Arika Patako Avevari Narabada Kadash Rakaida Belano Savadina Antekabira Garagadash Tedene Mandrika Pato help them outside is a flame on the altar The grace to stand, stand, stand. He said, before God whom I stand. Before God whom I stand. A generation that can stand by the Spirit. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' precious name. In Jesus' precious name. In Jesus' precious name. Can we be still for a moment? I'm rounding up. I'm rounding up. The final thing God wants to drop upon you tonight, a large number of persons here are young people. Your generation is waiting for you. But you cannot go empty handed. That's why God is imparting and kindling things in your life. The last thing God wants to deposit tonight is the oil of healing. One of the things that has ravaged our world is sickness. People die in families. People die in society because of sickness. The Bible said, is there no balm in Gilead? The congregation of the saints is supposed to be a healing balm to the nations. He said, is there no balm in Gilead? Is there no physician there? Why then is the health of the daughters of my children not yet recovered? It's our responsibility to bring healing to the nations. One more time, lift your hands toward heaven. If you can, be quiet. If you can, be quiet. As God releases this impartation, those of you who are sick, you will discover that the healing power will begin to touch you. Ear conditions will be healed. Eye conditions will be healed. Growths in the body will vanish. Organ infections will be healed right now. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. I stretch hands over them now. Kai. Please stop playing the keyboard. I'm seeing that something aggressive is about to happen here. I'm limited. Ah. People will be injured. Please, in the name of Jesus, can we be calm for a moment? If you can't, just be still. Peace be still. In the name of Jesus. Welcome to Nakazu Watch TV. On Nakazu Watch TV, we are a great team and we work on life transforming messages that will bring you into realms of divine encounter with the world of the truth. Please, don't forget to subscribe like and share our videos. God bless you.